this video is just for people who are starting out in the business and want to know the basic equipment that you need to maybe start the business or to get the business going. So these are just the basic um, stuff that you need. Once you have these, you can start filming weddings. You know what I mean? You can start your wedding videography business. So these are the basics that you need. That was a long intro, but let's go. So number one is a good camera. Okay, guys. So the first thing you're going to need is a camera. Of course, you can't record a wedding without a camera, right? So filming is all about cameras. So you're going to need a good camera. So nowadays, um, cameras have advanced. Some of these features, they were not even available in the more advanced cameras, like the image stabilization and all this stuff. So all these new technologies that's going on and stuff like that, it's helping you guys, um, the beginners, you know, it's helping you guys make your videos look like professionals without having way more like, you know, expensive professional gear. So a camera that's like, let's say um, the Sony a7 III, uh, which it came out like not too long ago, but it's a good camera, you know, so that's between a pro and, a, you know, a more consumer camera. It could do a lot of things. The image quality is good. I mean, just I'm giving an example. Like you don't need a $5,000 camera to start a wedding videography business. Okay. Especially if you're not getting any clients yet and you're just trying to build your portfolio, you just need like, you know, a good camera. So what's a good camera? A good camera is a camera that's going to perform well in low light because wedding you deal with receptions. And most of the receptions that I've filmed have been at night. So that's why, that's the reason why I invested in a Sony A7S when it came out, because that camera just like was amazing in low light situations. So look at a camera that's gonna be good in low light and try and uh, invest in that camera. But if you can't afford that camera, cause these cameras go anywhere from 1500 and up, right? The good ones that are better in low light. So, you know, so, search for those cameras and if i mean if they're too expensive for you because you're just beginning right uh, i'm assuming as a beginner you don't have a lot of money so just look into you know the cameras that are affordable and see which one that is on in your budget range and just purchase that so when it comes to like you know i'm not really going to go into like specific cameras specific brands because i don't want to have people in the comments arguing and you know disliking the video and you know, talking shit because I'm like, oh, talking about Sony or talking about Canon or talking about the Panasonic and they don't like uh, a brand that I'm talking about or recommending. So I'm not just, I'm not gonna go into recommending which brand and which camera specifically. So I'm just gonna say any good camera will help you. Any good camera, cause there's a lot of good cameras these days. So just do your research. And uh, most of the cameras that at least came out between 2015 and 2020, they should be good cameras, especially if they're full frame, you know, they should be good to be used for wedding films. So any good camera will help you. So that's the number one equipment you're gonna need is a good camera. Okay, guys. So number two um, is a good versatile lens. So a lens, you're gonna need a lens, right? So you're going to need a good versatile lens. And in this situation, I will recommend that you start with a zoom lens because why not a prime lens, right? The good thing with the zoom lens is, you know, it's more versatile. It's, it, you know, you can do more with a zoom lens. You can actually get close to a uh, situation without being close. So in this case with weddings, us wedding filmmakers, um, when we shoot in the, the ceremony, a ceremony is an intimate um, event, right? It's an intimate moment whereby they just want like their close friends and families to witness that moment. That's why like they don't want it to feel like, you know, they're doing it for the cameras. They don't want it to feel like, you know, it's all like it's all a setup and this and that. That's why a zoom lens is good because you could just be further out. Maybe you can even be in the back of the room or you can set your cameras up there and just zoom into the action as opposed to some wedding filmmakers or some photographers who actually just go up to the front right there, blocking people from uh, uh, looking at the bride and groom as they exchange vows and do whatever. So I would recommend that you get a zoom lens because a zoom lens is gonna be more, you know, flexible. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna be 
you could do more with a zoom lens, right? But primes, I mean, they're good, they're sharp, they're fast, they're this, they're that. But if you're just starting out, guys, um, you start out with a zoom lens. If that's the only lens, if you're going to go to a camera with one lens, I would really 100% with my life, um, you know, recommend that you go with a zoom lens. So what focal lens am I talking about here? I'm talking about, you know, you could go, you could do um, 18 to 50. That's as long as it's a zoom lens, honestly, it's good. You could do, but I would recommend you go to something that's going, that's going to go up to like 105 or 200 or 300. You know, the more, the better. But if, you know, it depends on your situation. So zoom lens as a starter would be ideal for a wedding situation. So number three is a good tripod. So why do you need a tripod? So a tripod, at least it helps you. It frees your arms, you know, because let's say during a ceremony, these things take long. You know, ceremonies, some couches take like an hour, 40 minutes, uh, an hour, 30 minutes. So you're not going to be holding your camera there the whole time for 30 minutes because, I mean, you know, you're going to get tired. All right, guys, just give me a quick minute here. And we'll get back to the video. So I just created a course for all you guys, all you wedding filmmakers. I just created a course called How to Film Cinematic Weddings. So in this course, you will learn everything that I've learned through my years of filming weddings. Because on the YouTube channel, everything is just scattered all over the place. And in some cases, I don't go in detail. But in this course, since you guys will be purchasing it, I will go in full length detail giving you everything that I have learned through these years of filming weddings. So from the ceremony to reception, to the B-roll, editing wedding trailers, to editing wedding highlights, all the tricks, all the tips, everything guys. You can actually look at the content before you access it. You can look at everything that the course offers. I know like right now, everything is crazy with the pandemic and 2020 was worse. 2021, you can get more weddings now because things are slowing down with the pandemic. So with that being in mind and understand that everybody's struggling right now, guys, I've added 50% off on the course. So it's just going to be 50% off. So that way, at least, you know, it's going to be an affordable price. I mean, think about going to film school. How much are you going to pay at film school? But when you come to my course, it's very, very affordable. Anybody can purchase it, especially the beginners. I'm looking at you guys, you know, because you guys want to get established in the business. So I want to help you with this course. We're adding more uh, bonuses and I'll keep adding more stuff for you guys in the course. So make sure you check the video at the end of this video or you can just click the link in the description, the first link, if you don't want to wait till the end of the video. So thank you guys. Let's get back to the video now. I don't care if you get the tripod from Walmart, guys. I don't care if you get the tripod from a barber shop. Just get a tripod, guys. Just get a tripod and sit it there and, uh, you know, put your camera there and record the situation. So you will need a tripod to film a wedding. As a beginner, yes, you will need a tripod. I don't care if your grandma gave you a tripod, just you will need a tripod. It's good to have a fluid head tripod, but honestly, as long as if you don't have a tripod, any tripod is good. If you don't have any car, you know, any car is good to get you from point A to point B. You don't need a BMW to get from point A to point B. You can perfectly get into a Corolla and get to where you're going, guys. You know what I mean? You don't need a freaking, uh, uh, anyway, you get the point. Okay, so number four is good audio uh, devices. So you need some good audio devices. But honestly, I'm going to be honest with you guys. My first few weddings, I didn't have any audio to mic the groom, mic the officiant, whatever, on-camera audio, none of that. When I, first, when I was first starting, I didn't, you know, um, learn all these things. I didn't have audio. So I just used in-camera audio and... Um, the clients were paying me like you know jump change like 200 here 300 there so i guess they really didn't know also about the audio thing and you know i delivered my best i did because my first few weddings i had nothing else to do so i was putting my all into these weddings but um if you can afford audio as a beginner guys i would recommend that you get some type of audio recording device so you can record um so just any, you know, speech and stuff like that, you can kind of record with, um, with, with a good audio device. So in this case, I don't care what anybody says, I'm going to recommend the Zoom H1, guys. And of course, um, 
as you advance, you can get stuff like this right here. This is a, an on-camera, um, on-camera audio, uh, yeah, on-camera run and gun type situation. You just put it in there and, you know, and all these have like different uses because this is just, anyway, so guys, um, you need some type of good audio. You need some good audio for your weddings. But if you're just starting out, I really understand a lot of us when we were starting out. Anyway, I'm just, I'm not going to say a lot of us. When I was starting out, I didn't have audio equipment. I didn't even think about it because I was just a beginner, right? I just wanted to film the wedding or whatever. But you will need some good audio stuff like this right here. Uh, this is the Zoom H4N Pro, but this stuff will come in later. But when you're starting, just get some type, just get some good audio, guys. So trust me, it will really help you for that clear um, voice. So number five is lighting, guys. So you will need some type of light. You will need some good light. I've done videos here on my channel where I talk about um, cheap, affordable lights for receptions. Please search those videos on my channel in case I don't put the link to the specific videos in the description. Um, I have a lot going on, but you know what I'm saying? But yeah, so just search my channel. I have like, you know, uh, I talk about on camera lighting, good video about on camera lighting. And I talk about a good video on the light that I'm using, which is, um, anyways, reception lights that you can use. So that video is going to uh, explain more on reception lights and it's going to explain more on on camera lights. And also I have separate videos just talking about the on camera light and a specific video just talking about, you know, reception lights. So if you are really serious, just go search on my channel so you can know how to set up um, lights in the reception and stuff like that. And when and how to use the on camera light. I go into details in those videos. So I recommend you guys watch those videos. They're on my channel. Okay, guys, about lighting. So number six is a good computer to edit your footage on. So, I mean, you know, me, I'm a Mac person. When I first started, I was doing Windows. I couldn't afford a badass um, Windows computer. The computers that I was using were just like, you know, normal personal computers, the HPs and stuff like that, you know, just for like doing basic stuff. But for like when it came to like, you know, editing videos and all this, um, you know, heavy work type stuff, um, I didn't have a Windows computer that was good at that. I never liked Macs, you know, until I started using one and I just like, I never looked back. Like, you know, I would never go on to using Windows. Like, I don't know, you gotta pay me at least some money, but I wouldn't go back using uh, Windows. I'm, I'm a Mac person now, I use Mac. So yeah, so just as long as the specs on your computer are good, you can edit a lot of footage on it. You know what I mean? As long as the videos play back smoothly and uh, you know, no lag and stuff like that, you can use a Windows. But honestly, I really recommend a MacBook Pro if you're doing any type of editing, because even the basic, this is the basic one that just came, just basic, whatever, basic uh, specs and stuff. And it's still, you know, I've edited a lot of weddings on this, a lot of other projects on this, like music videos, and it never lags and it's a 13 inch thing. So I would recommend that, you know, you get a good computer to edit your footage because you're gonna need a good so computer. I recommend MacBook Pro. I'm not gonna talk, um, crap about the other, you know, uh, manufacturers of computers, but I'm into Apple when it comes to uh, editing and stuff like that. So number seven is editing software. So you're going to need some type of editing software, guys, um, if you want to, if you're going to film weddings. So what software? It's up to you. Honestly, I recommend whatever you are comfortable with, whatever is convenient to you is what I would recommend that you use. Okay, I'm not gonna say use Final Cut Pro because I use Final Cut Pro. Use Premiere Pro because I use Premiere Pro. Uh, those are the only two that I use, but you know, I'm not gonna recommend you guys to go and out and use those things. But you know, if you use Sony Vegas, if you use um, DaVinci Resolve, if you use, uh, what are the other ones? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know a lot of other ones. Cause I don't like getting into other things that I know I'm not 
I don't, I know I don't like using those things. You know, some of the things are just too complicated for no freaking reason, right? But I mean, hey, there are people who like, oh, I edit on this software. I edit on this, blah, blah, blah. I'm a pro because I do this and this. Like, it's all about the, your creativity-ness, man. So it's all about how creative you are. You know, you can have um, Final Cut Pro and um, your, your film is going to come out way better than somebody who actually has like analog editing stuff like the black magic stuff whereby you actually touch the knobs and stuff like that like to color grade and blah 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 like woo, woo, like you know honestly it's all about what you're doing and uh what works for you guys don't don't be trying to get stuff that works for other people you know get what works for you so for me what works is what works for me i don't want to tell you oh this works for me so you go do it I would just tell you if something works for you guys, that's the best thing for you to get and for you to put money in as far as like getting presets for that thing, as far as getting plugins for that thing. So whatever works for you, just put more money into it so it can get better and whatever. But um, I would recommend that whatever works for you is the best um, equipment for you. So extra stuff, guys, extra stuff like um, so those were the seven equipments that you need as a beginner, guys, just the basics. So all this other stuff I'm going to say now, all this is just extra stuff, guys. All this is just hype. So gimbals, drones, GoPros, cranes, jibs, any fancy gear that, um, you know, people come up with like, oh, you need this for a wedding. You need a Peter McKinnon bag for a wedding. I'm not shitting on Peter. McKinnon. I'm just giving an example. You know what I mean? Oh, you need these presets to shoot a wedding. You need these lats. You need, you know, like, you, you don't need all that shit. Honestly, this equipment that I just named is all you need. All these other extra stuff like drones and gimbals and whatever, all these things are just extra, like, equipment, you know, to kind of help you and complement you, your work. But um, honestly, uh, you don't really need a drone when you're first starting and you're doing whatever. Like, you don't need a, a, a drone to shoot a wedding, guys, you know. As long as you got the basic cameras or whatever, that's all you need. GoPros or gimbals, you know, like you don't need all this stuff. I mean, it helps you later on to make your videos more cinematic and this and that. But when you're first starting out, you just need the basics, guys, okay? You just need the basics. Like, let's say um, if you're teaching somebody how to, if you're teaching somebody how to shoot a gun, right? Are you going to give them a bazooka or are you going to give them a pistol to begin with? You know, first give them a pistol. Let them, you know get the feeling like okay this is how it goes you just pull the trigger and i get some vibration or whatever okay and then now you go to um you start talking about you know ars and uh all that stuff ak-47s you know so they and then they get into shooting those guns and then from there they advance and they go into bombs and shit like that you know you just don't go from not knowing nothing to you know setting off bombs and stuff so just focus on the basics and the drones and the gimbals and everything else comes after at least you make some money and you're more experienced in the business and stuff like that so that's all i'm going to say and in conclusion you don't have to start with high-end equipment it's all about the person behind the gear that matters guys okay guys you don't have to start out with high-end equipment you don't have to wait till you get a red epic to shoot your first wedding guys you know what I'm saying? Just like um, whatever camera you have right now is the best camera, guys. Whatever camera that you can access is the best camera. Don't wait to get like the latest and greatest before you go out and shoot. Because trust me, you're going to be waiting forever, right, for the latest and greatest. So that's what it is, guys. So it's all about the person behind the camera. Anyway, guys, if this video was valuable to you, make sure you smash the like button maybe this is the first video you're watching of me but just make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed and uh if i gave you guys some great value guys until the next video uh stay well guys all right guys it's finally here how to create cinematic wedding films do you want to create wedding films that make people cry do you want to be the number one filmmaker in your city the one that every couple goes to and say I don't care how much you charge, just make our wedding film look as amazing as the ones you have on your website. See, I want you to dominate your city. I want you to dominate your market. I want you to be so good that you render your competition useless.
I want you to walk into any wedding, no matter the location, budget or whatever, and make the wedding film look cinematically amazing. But most importantly, I want you to capture their hearts. So with this course, you will learn the exact same formula that I use to achieve that one go. Okay, that one go. So how would you feel if you can do that? You know, how you feel if you can be that cinematic filmmaker that does those things? How would you feel if people came to you and were like, hey, film my wedding because of what you have on your website? Because it's that amazing. How would you feel? How would you feel? I mean, you let me know. How would you feel? See, when I first started wedding filmmaking, I wish a course like this existed. A course that took me behind the scenes at real wedding films. A course that detailed step by step what to expect and how to react, how to capture B-roll, emotional moments, the equipments needed, and how to use them. How to edit the wedding trailer, the wedding highlights, and the full video. When it comes to weddings, it's not about pricing. It's not about how long you've been in business. It's about your creative skills, the films that you create. It's about the end result, the product that you produce for your clients. That's all that matters. When people visit your website, they don't look at pricing. They watch your films first, then decide if the price is within their budget. But they watch your films first, okay? They need the proof that you are the person that can produce the films that you know will emotionally capture their hearts and you know their viewers that will actually capture those moments so this course will teach you how to create films that capture their attention but most importantly films that capture their emotions films that will make them say i want this guy or girl to film my wedding so before becoming a full-time wedding filmmaker, I used to do like food delivery when I used to live in New York. I used to, you know, check bags out there and I moved to Ohio. I used to um, work in Subway over there, making BMTs and you know, those sandwiches and stuff. Only after my films got better, cinematically better, that's when, you know, I started getting more bookings and I, you know, I was able to quit my job. I, I was able to tell Subway, hey, guys, this is my last week, my two weeks, whatever you know, I'm just gonna be doing our uh, wedding films because at that time I managed to book at least like three to four weddings every month. That made me rely on myself and stop waiting for somebody else to give me a paycheck, you know, because people don't care about you. Employers don't care about you. They just pay you enough to keep you around. They don't pay you enough to where you can leave them. They pay you enough just to keep you around. But when you become an entrepreneur and a business owner, that's when you start making money that will enable you to live the life that you want, you know, the life that you've always wanted. So 2020 was a tough year for the wedding industry. A lot of canceled weddings due to the pandemic. I understand and that's why for a limited time, this course will be 50% off. Until things pick up again, this course will be 50% off. So if you're interested in taking the elevator, click the first link in this video description and get access to the course right now, right away. It's available, first link in the description. And also, you will get exclusive bonus material such as cinematic color grading lots, how to book your first wedding, how to price your wedding films, how to build your portfolio, exclusive downloads for course members only, and much more. You will get all that when you purchase the course.